week, I'm catching up with two couples who had designs on homes packed with potential. Brace yourselves. OK. OK? Do you think size matters, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> Both searches were gargantuan tasks. Oh, it's horrible. This has to be the most disastrous viewing I have had. But disaster didn't last long. Job done. Right, let's go home. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm back. Look at this! And seeing one of the most impressive renovations in location, location, location history. It's changed our lives doing this house. This week, we're back to visit two creative couples. Nadine and Toby wanted a project to get their teeth into. And Simon and Wendy wanted a home and a studio on a shoestring. You know we love a challenge. I was on the property hunt in South East London with designers Nadine and Toby. They were living in Brockley, an area attractive to many artists because of its proximity to Goldsmiths College, where our pair were both trained. So it's no coincidence that this design duo were drawn here. We'd love the area. We've got a good community of friends. When we saw this place, it was kind of, it made sense, didn't it? So, uh, yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> Nadine and Toby are a couple after my own heart. They bought their first flat at 26 and have spent the last three years doing it up by themselves. It was um, quite a mess when we first got here and we've redone everything. So we've replaced all the floors throughout the property, put in a new kitchen, a new bathroom, pretty much redesigned the whole space and how it works. Having outgrown and recently sold their flat, this stylish couple have got designs on their next project. And they know exactly what they want. Oh, there's that pebble dash pebble. It's white, white pebble dash, yeah, exactly. There's no Georgian. We're going to rip everything out no matter what, <laughs> so it may as well be a wreck. We want something that's architecturally interesting that's got a bit of a story behind it. We seem to be drawn to those flat-fronted Georgian properties. We really want to buy on a, on a street that's got very similar-looking houses. Steal yourself, Kirsty. I think you're about to meet our pickiest pair ever. The criteria just goes on and on, but it's it all doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, I think it's... It's going to come down to a feeling. Well, that's crystal clear then. Nadine and Toby had the feeling once, when they thought they'd found their dream home. But sadly, they lost their perfect property in a bidding war. It was a bit of a heartbreaker, actually. It's caused a problem, because we would have probably moved by now had we not seen that house. Because we wouldn't be expecting so much. Yeah. With only two weeks to go before they have to move out of their flat, Nadine and Toby urgently need to find a home. It's time for me to take these two back to the drawing board. You've loved and lost, and we need to sort of take a jetpack and blast you out of that <laughs> previous search into a new search. Definitely. That sounds good. We're up for that. That <laughs> yeah. sounds fantastic. Let's do that. What we want is to get you a bigger, more future-proof yeah. home. The flat that we have just sold, mm -hmm. it's the best flat on the worst street. What you want is the worst house on the best street. Exactly. You want yeah, the exactly. bomb site, and I think focusing on the worst house in the best street is probably a very, very good mission. Yeah, we're definitely up for that. I mean, it's an yeah. interesting way of looking at it. Definitely very different to the way we looked at it before. My couple have a budget of £350,000. They're looking for an unusual property with a flat-fronted exterior. It must be in an area with similar architecture, close to broccoli, and have an interesting story to boot. Their wish list reads like a novel, but with you on the job, Kirsty, I'm sure it'll have a happy ending. So I was scouring the South East London streets for doer-uppers, and Phil had a daunting search further north, where his pair wanted to buy as close to the city of Derby as possible. Fashion designer Wendy and partner Simon, a professional photographer, were finding space rather tight. So were hunting for a house with business potential. Wendy was becoming more home-based with her own clothing label, while Simon's business was growing steadily. It meant they had quite an unusual request for their first property. We want somewhere that's got to be a photography studio. But we also want somewhere that is can be a home as well. Not exactly conventional, but I could see why they needed it. When doing fashion shoots and the like, it meant hiring the local community hall, 
hardly ideal, so this creative couple wanted an uber space on a shoestring. Anyone home? Hello! <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> it is a difficult set of criteria. It, whilst flexible, your, your key elements are, are not flexible, and it's those that are going to make it challenging. Mm. We've lived like this before, though. Um, when I first moved down, Simon was renting, um, a, it's called it the penthouse, <laughs> like flat, and it, the living room converted into a studio base, so we wouldn't always have a living room. All I need, really, is a high ceiling with, like, rolls that can roll the back drop down, okay. pull some sofas to the side, and job done. But, and you're perfectly happy for that to be a living room or a bedroom? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Wendy, how much space will you need? Um, probably just need a desk space. You know. Simon gets the whole of the house. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen her clothes, man. This house is a lie. Oh, yeah, shoes. Like the <laughs> <laughs> With £137,000, their budget's hardly bursting at the seams, but they want to be in the popular northwest suburbs close to the city. It must have at least two bedrooms and preferably be open plan. Oh, and of course, must have room for a photography studio. Absolutely no pressure, then. Do I have mug written on my forehead? <laughs> Do I? Yeah, it's tattooed. I, I, I shouldn't ask you it's that question. It's with invisible ink. Yeah. <laughs> You've just got to hope the perfect property for Wendy and Simon isn't invisible. I chose our first property in the belief it will be a great starter home for them. It's slap bang in their desired area of five lamps. It has a fantastic garden, while inside they'll find a traditional two up, two down layout with a good size basement for all Simon's gear. And it's right on budget at £136,950. I've seen lots of, of, of similar types, but I think this is the best of its ilk. I'm not keen on terraced houses and I prefer things to be on the end. Or I think can't. most people would, but you only get four end of terrace in a whole street, so that would narrow it down a little more. Okay. <laughs> but come and see what you think. Okay, okay great stuff. Oh, my word, she's not even through the front door. Looks like you have a picky customer, Pip. What I'm keen to explore with you guys is whether this room is sufficient for a studio. This is a little bit small, to be honest. In an ideal, if, if that wall was not down and this was all open plan, yeah. that would be yeah, perfect. Yeah, and the kitchen's down there, that would be, mm. that'd be okay. perfect. I mean, the ceiling's perfect, that's the height that we need. It's right on the money, it's in a good area. Yeah. yeah. It's a quality house. In yeah. that terrace, the, the whole thing about the terrace house has gone out of my mind. It's mainly, you know, it's a lovely house, I really like it. Close. Very, very close. Close. <laughs> close, very close. I mean, close isn't bad. <laughs> close isn't bought, Phil. It looks like the studio space is top of the list. Yes, but remember, this has to be a home as well, and I think you'll find upstairs fits the bill. Now, it's a fairly standard layout for these Derby terraced houses mm. up, up here. We've got two bedrooms, but you have to walk through this bedroom in order to get to the bathroom. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's nice size. Uh, not a huge problem. It, it's a, it's a well-balanced little house. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not the biggest house in the world, and it does have some issues with with the size of the room and, and whether that would work as a studio. Mm -hmm. But I think as a first time, it's very very nice. Mm. Well, look, why don't you guys have a bit of time, and I'll catch up with you outside. I'll, I'll leave you to it for a bit. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. This is a great home, but I'm not convinced these guys see it that way. There's still a main problem with the studio, but... Yeah, it's a bit... It's, it's nice as it is, it's still the fact that you can't have a studio down. Mm. There is no doubt that this is an excellent, or would be, an excellent first-time buy. It's got everything that they wanted, apart from the studio. And I just have to hope that they see a bit of sense. Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. So, what's it to be? What do you think? Oh. We like the house, but it's not a studio. I just no. can't see it turning into a studio downstairs yeah, I think it might or be just upstairs. a bit too much work or. Mm. It's maybe Love impossible. the garden, but as we said, we're willing to sacrifice a garden and a bedroom for a studio. So. Fair enough. Um, we've got more to see, but please bear it in mind. Don't rule it out completely. Okay. Um, got bigger things, but different things, and there will be different compromises. Lovely. But you knew that anyway. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a negative start, Phil, but there's still time for things to develop more positively. This week, we're back visiting two couples who both had big asks. In Derby, I was searching for Wendy and Simon, who were only after a good-sized house in the centre of town, suitable for two businesses. It's a doddle. You can do that standing on your I'm head, I'm thinking Phil. of packing it in, I'll tell you. No. 
With only 137 grand, there wasn't much zoom in Wendy and Simon's budget for a home with a photography studio. We're willing to sacrifice a garden and a bedroom for a studio. In London, our creative couple Nadine and Toby were shrewdly searching in the city's southeast, where property prices back in 2011 were 21% cheaper than those north of the river. Nadine and Toby want a habitable wreck to renovate in their beloved Brooklyn. Not an easy find. So I've stretched the search to the vibrant area of Camberwell, a patch they discounted because of price. My first property should win them over. There's heaps of potential and I've brought Phil along. As a former surveyor, he can have his uses. All I will say now is brace yourselves. OK. okay? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I like to be... <laughs> <laughs> this is a challenge, almost, I think, maybe one of the most challenging things we've ever shown anyone. Yeah, I'd so agree. Well. Yeah. Yeah. OK, right, in we go. Nadine and Toby want a house with a good story, and this huge property has certainly got that. The ground floor was originally a shop, but now the whole building is home to a Masonic order, and it's ripe for renovation. This three-storey building could well be the rep thereafter. It's a massive space, over 1,500 square feet, and every single part of it needs restoration. It's on the market at offers over 350 grand, all of Nadine and Toby's budget, meaning they'd have to save hard and do a lot of renovation work themselves. Something of a surprise, I should imagine. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I love uh, it. This is an Afro-Caribbean Masonic hall. And you could use this as well as living, it's habitable as well, this, this bottom floor. Um, if you wanted to live in this, in this room here, you'd have to reapply for panel permission. It would take time. You'd have to demonstrate that there wasn't a demand for it to be a shop. If you're tempted to transform a commercial property into a home, take a leaf out of Toby's book and do your research. It's crucial to weigh up the work involved before making a decision to part with your cash. This is just huge. It's, I didn't expect this any, anything this big. Nadine loves the scale of this place, but I wonder if she realises the size of the job at hand. I did hear Toby say to you as you came upstairs, don't, you know, calm down. <laughs> What's all that about? <laughs> yeah, I get excited really quickly, right. and I don't necessarily think about the problems. Whereas he's probably thinking, how are we going to have the money to do this? Yes. Toby's right to be cautious about this place because there is so much work to do. There's damp in the basement, holes in the roof, and it needs a complete refurb. Yeah, it's kind of a scary space. I mean, it's huge. This building does look scary, but it is structurally sound. There's a hell of a lot of work to do here, isn't it? It is. Which is great. You know, that's what we asked for. But you'd have to live in it while he did it. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, Everything we've looked at before, this has been quite a bit smaller. Mm. And you can understand how quickly it'll take you to do things, whereas this is a little bit more of an unwieldy beast, as it were. They're serious about doing all the work themselves, they could save a large amount of money. But it would keep them busy for years. I wouldn't blame them if they didn't have the courage for that house, but they have embraced it initially yeah, they have. really well. Yeah. Most people who take around something like that would, would, would be frightened. Would <laughs> run out of the door. This property has so much more space than they'd ever hoped for. But will the scale of the work send them running back to Broccoli? This is fantastic. In fact, let's just leave. <laughs> let's just leave. Still excited? Yeah. <laughs> Seen anything to put you off? Not too much, but it is a big job. That's the it only thing. I mean, it, it, you know, I'm up for it, but it is, as I say, it's just the scaling on it. We've set a reasonably high bar. We've got other yeah. properties to see, yeah. other things to consider. It's a great start, though. Smiling faces all round. When Captain Spencer's on board Kirsty's search, it's plain sailing. It's certainly choppier waters with your search for Wendy and Simon in Derby. From the first property we showed them, it was obvious that room for a photography studio is right up at the top of the list. So to get that space, our second property is outside their desired location of upmarket inner city Derby. Well, we've um, we've had to cross town this morning. Okay. And look what happens when you get to the wrong side of the tracks. Mm. <laughs> Kirsty shows up. <laughs> It's east of the town, in Alveston, an area of Derby that they told us they're not keen on. But you get a lot more for your money, and Phil is very excited about this one. For a start, it's an end of terrace. 
Inside, it's large and light, with heaps of space downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs. And with an asking price that's 15 grand below budget, we'd not be doing our job if we didn't show it to them. Everything's been done, rewired, replumbed, new windows, new doors, everything. Wow. All you've got to do is choose the flooring you want to put in and just get on with making it how you want it to look. Yeah. It's like a black canvas then, really, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You noticed that it was end of terrace? Yeah. Come see what's in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the little surprise that we have for you. Come, come, Phil. It's more than a little surprise. It's huge. A two-storey building ripe for conversion into Simon's studio. You're not going to find this kind of wow. size in a house, certainly not within, no. within your budget. That's crazy. It doesn't end there. To the side, there is not one but two sheds, ideal for Wendy's clothes empire. To find this kind of space in a, uh, yeah. an end of terrace house is, yeah. is unique. And I never use that word, but it yeah. really is. Yeah. And it's end of terrace as well, <laughs> which is perfect. Like right. Job done. Right, let's go home. Let's do it. <laughs> that's, right, that's what we like. <laughs> not just yet, Phil. They haven't seen upstairs. But I don't think Simon cares right now. Would you take the top out? Would you take the floor out? Yeah, I think I, maybe take half of it out. So you, I don't know what it's, what, what's it like upstairs. Have a look. Help yourself. <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> I ain't going up there. Is it safe? <laughs> Let's have a look. Loves it. Loves it. Do you think Simon would even look at another house now? Knowing Simon, he's probably a bit wary of the location because it's complete opposite side of the town where we wanted to be on. Right. Even, I think that would be the only thing that would be the drawback, but I think now he's seen a studio, he might change his mind. I'm stunned we've found something suitable, to be perfectly honest. This blank canvas will really get their creative juices flowing and all with cash to spare to renovate those outbuildings. And they're even warming to the location. Well, to be honest, I'm thinking, you know, the location's not ideal, but we know we're going to get anything like that it's where we want to live, no way, are we? I mean, we've got to factor into this whole equation the budget mm. and that it is well within budget. Yeah. And you were so worried about not finding them anything, Phil. I think you've put this property into pole position. And in London, Nadine and Toby were tempted by my first property, but a renovation of that scale will consume their lives. So I want to show them a more manageable option in another area they're considering. Hither Green is two miles from their current home in Brockley. It hasn't got the same buzz yet, but there are signs that this area is on the up. This house could be the blank canvas our design duo are after. And it's huge. It's got four double bedrooms, a loft, and a 40-foot garden. It's on the market at £347,500, which is on budget. Nadine and Toby did ask for a flat-fronted property, but I think this charming exterior would appeal to most people. It doesn't have any curb appeal at all. To be honest, it's freaking pressure me out a little bit. Let, let's just... <laughs> Try and keep an open mind, all of us. Yeah. And um, we'll just go in and see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry, sir. Oh, it's horrible. What would you have to discover about this house to make you want to buy it? I don't Nothing. Think, I don't think. Like that it suddenly just became would... a different house. Make absolutely sure that you really, really don't like this house as much as you don't okay. like this house. Well, let's check out the, um, the garden, because that's going to be the feature, right? Right. Let's do it. <laughs> this has to be the most disastrous viewing I have had. Chin up, Kirstels. Perhaps they'll change their tune once they've seen the back garden. <laughs> the train! This is a lovely yeah. feature. Especially because I... it's so high, you can't escape that. Can you imagine the family barbecue out here? Something tells me these guys won't be sizzling sausages out there next summer. Just made us realise that perhaps... Um... Suburbia is not really... Not for us. You did play with the idea of somewhere slightly more out of town. Yeah. We've looked to see the best that's available. This is the best that's available. It's confirmed that we need to stay further in town. Yeah. This is a good house and will make someone a great home, but clearly not my pair. 
time to get ourselves closer to the city. One hundred and fifty miles away in Derby, we may have already unearthed Wendy and Simon a gem of a studio space with the last property. But before we sign the deed, Phil's final find might just put the cat amongst the pigeons. The big factor here is this place offers the ideal home and location thereafter. It's walking distance from the city centre. Plus, with two bedrooms and a converted attic, it's got more space than they've asked for, and I think it has potential written all over it. And the price is again under their budget, £134,950. I wanted to show you what I think is, is an alternative house. The first place I showed you was an excellent first-time buyer. Mm. Didn't really work for the, for the business. Mm -hmm. What we've just come from works brilliantly for the business. Yeah. The area's a bit unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. This sits in the middle. It's got opportunity. You can add to it, you can improve it. Um, we're back in centre of town, three bedrooms. Right. Three so bedrooms, eh? There might be a studio upstairs. Okay. But equally, coming up, have a look out the back right. here. Okay. It has got this wow. sort of nice. slightly ramshackle, but um, full of potential <laughs> conservatory <laughs> yeah, out the back. Like it. And the garden. The garden's 100 foot. Massive, isn't it? Goes all the way to the back, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is that a shed at the back? It's a big shed at the back. And you've got separate access along the side here. There's a doorway yeah. to the front. So the even the house. So if you were to use that, and if you were to create your studio at the back of the garden, uh, you, you're going to spend a bit of money doing that. So it's not something in the short term. Yeah, what are you, what are you thinking, price-wise? 10 to 15 grand. 10 to 15. With this house already at the top of their budget, it means building a studio will have to wait. But for the time being, there is still a good-sized bedroom upstairs. My question is, is this room big enough for a studio? <sighs> Do you think size matters, Wendy? Uh, <laughs> of course it matters, Phil. At least when it comes to property. And this is a place that just keeps on giving. There's a converted attic upstairs, which will make an ideal office for Wendy. I think it's got them really thinking. They've got three, three bedrooms. But can you three use rooms. that bedroom as a studio for now? Do you feel you could bring clients into this place? It'd be nice if we could put something in the garden, to be honest, but I don't know That's if we've got enough money for that, have we? No, for the future, that, mm. that would be. For now, you'd be all right with that. Yeah, I think it's something we need to think about, really, isn't it? They're having a big, long think upstairs about their priorities. Uh, this, I think, is very flexible. It could suit them well. It remains to be seen, though, whether they are flexible. Confused. <laughs> it's yeah. a sprain, isn't it? This one. Mm. I think the other one's still a high contention. Being honest, but it just really is the location. I know, you know, we have to compromise on something. Everything else is fine. It's just the location. I think showing us all that space is mm. just. Yeah. You know, so much more we've got that in the head now. And, and you perhaps you can't see. Yeah. Fulfilling your business ambitions here, but it's it would be possible. It's just not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be thinking about. It. Is it the studio or is it the home? Mm. You've got an awful lot to think about. So take a bit of time. Glad it's not my decision. <laughs> yeah. This week, we're back with two imaginative couples searching for homes with pockets full of potential. In Derby, Phil's left Wendy and Simon with a tough decision in their hunt for a home with a photography studio. They've got three, three bedrooms. But can you three use rooms. that bedroom as a studio for now? And in London, there's only one contender for my design duo, the Masonic Hall in Camberwell. Oh, wow. This is amazing! <laughs> but it needs lots of work, so the pressure is on with property number three. For my final house, I'm taking Nadine and Toby back to home turf. We're going to Broccoli, the area they know and love. It's five miles south of the city and is one of London's best-preserved Victorian suburbs. So I'm confident that my last house has all the looks thereafter. It is a nice shaped house. It's yeah, a nice shaped nice house. house. It is a nice shaped house. This property serves up all the space they asked for and it would be half the work of the Masonic Hall. It's got three bedrooms and a decent-sized back garden. It's on just under £285,000 which is a whopping 65 grand under budget. 
all it needs is a bit of modernisation, and you're the perfect people to do that. Yeah. Psychologically, it's a lot less strenuous. But this could be the reality of what we will end up having to get. Yeah, I'm thinking just... that the thing that puts me off far more than the house or the anything road. we do is the road. It's the road. Because if I'm going to live in a residential street, I want to be well away from anything with that sort of level of passing traffic. If Nadine and Toby want to stay in their beloved broccoli, this busy road is the compromise. It's worth considering just in terms of actually having ca really, cash in the pocket. It's isn't it? It's cash in the pocket and... Uh... You normally are the one saying that we should be sensible, but you're not. It's just too sensible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this place would leave them with money in the bank to do the work, but it's not inspiring them. There's nothing that's really exciting about it. It's not so much of a challenge and yeah. it's not particularly interesting. So even the lure of a house which is under budget, with looks and location, isn't enough to tempt them away from the Masonic Hall in Camberwell. They've fallen head over heels for it. Priced at offers over £350,000, it's over their budget, but has been on the market for two and a half years. So that puts us in a good position to try and get it for less. Is there any chance we could go 3.30 or is that pushing it too far, do you think? They've accepted a number of offers at 3.50. Yeah. The fact that they've fallen through Gives us is what leverage. we're going to go with. Time to get down to business. It's not for me to advise your client, but I think really they should just call it a day, accept an offer of £330,000 and go on their merry way. It's a considered offer for a property that's been on the market for so long, but will the vendors see it that way? Wendy and Simon have decided that the end terrace in Derby's Alverston is their favourite. On the market at 122 grand, it would leave them 15,000 pounds out of their budget of 137,000 in order to make the outbuildings habitable. But what will they decide? We would like to make an offer on the place. Okay, excellent. I'm delighted. My suggestion is that we offer basically 102 for the house and 8 for the studio, so total price, 110. 110, that's sort of the kind of thing we, well, were, we were trying to... We were thinking of, um, in our terms, a silly offer as well, and that's what we wanted to offer and see what they came back to us with. Decision made and the offer's in. Hello, Phil Spencer. I I'll ring you back. Thanks, Alison. Bye. They are willing to take an offer, but um, not that, not that offer. <laughs> <laughs> a raise of 3,000 is decided, so a second offer goes in at 113,000 pounds. Hopefully that will be enough. For Nadine and Toby, the first offer of 330,000 pounds is on the table. This isn't going to ring in a hurry. There's three trustees and the secretary. That's really rubbish. No, I know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I don't have a magic wand which makes this no. ring back within five minutes. Stand by, Kirsty. You might have to eat your words. Uh, right, OK. Simon! <gasps> this is not good, you ringing me back this quickly. They have said that they simply will not accept less than 350. Unfortunately, the owners are sticking to their guns. OK. No dice. They were quick to say no. So where will this leave Nadine and Toby? Wendy and Simon's offer of 113 grand for the Derby end of terrace is still on the table. Hi, Alison. How did you get on? Understood. Um, I'll report that news. Thanks, Alison. Cheers. Bye bye. It's accepted. Well done, Mr. Spencer. <laughs> but in London, Nadine and Toby aren't there yet. So we're busy playing the numbers game. Three, four, two, five hundred. Is that ridiculous? So we're kind of still seven and a half short. Do you think that makes a big difference? I think it does. I think it I crosses think the three. Do you? If they were to offer three, four, two, five hundred, 
That just leaves them seven and a half grand to put in a bath, put in a kitchen, mend the holes on the roof. OK, brilliant, bye. How did he feel about that? He said he's going to go back to them and tell them not to think about it rashly, but to really consider it. We're not going to hear from him again okay. today. No, OK, that's fine. It's a good offer for a property that's been on the market for two and a half years. But with three people in charge of making decisions, there's nothing we can do but wait for them to mull it over. And we're all agreed this special property is worth the wait. A few days later, Nadine and Toby's offer of 342500 was rejected. But determined not to be defeated, they increased it to 346. And a week later, they got great news. We were over the moon when they accepted our offer. We were, we were super excited, obviously, really, really excited, because it kind of felt like it was a bit unreachable, this place. Over the last four months, Nadine, Toby and their planning consultant, Sean, have submitted plans for the property, and at long last, full planning permission has been granted. But it was wonderful, because we knew we could... It was finally, finally time that we could actually move in. They got the keys yesterday and haven't wasted any time. We slept here last night. I think everyone thought we were crazy, because it's a bit like squatting in someone else's house at the moment. Yeah, the immediate plans are to kind of get it dry and warm and safe. Um, so we're doing a lot of ripping out for the first couple of weeks. So it's kind of livable. And obviously, so the dog can come up and join us. Um, and then we're just going to work floor by floor. That's the plan. Nadine and Toby had the most specific list of requirements I think I've ever seen. We said we wanted a, um, a four-bedroom house with a shop front, and we thought that that was ludicrous. But look at us now, we're here, isn't it? So exactly. They've got a lot of work to do, but their determination and creative flair is inspiring, and I know they're going to make this a fabulous home. For Wendy and Simon, the joy of their offer being accepted didn't last long. Their mortgage deal fell through, and the couple had to say goodbye to the unique property which had the potential to be both home and photography studio. Five years later, they have no regrets. In a way, everything happened for a reason. And... Mm. I think we were very lucky because obviously the credit crunch kicked in, all the houses dropped in price. Um, so if we did buy it, then, you know, we would have been in trouble. To up their budget, they rented, worked and saved super hard for two years. Eventually, this allowed them to score a three-bed terraced cottage in a favourite spot. A picturesque historical village between Derby City and the Dales, called Darley Abbey. It's amazing. I couldn't have asked for more, really. You know, parking space, bedrooms, big kitchen. Oh, I love it. It's an English heritage site, but it's like ten minutes from the city centre. Oh, we're well chuffed, <laughs> really, really chuffed. And so they should be, because they got a bargain. The house was originally priced at 220 grand, but their new budget was only 180,000. I so said, forget it, what's the point of looking at something? <laughs> Don't put yourself through the torture. No. But bless her, when just still went down for a little nosy. And it's a good job she did. It had been on the market for 18 months, and after some tough negotiating, Wendy managed to get it for an impressive 175,000. I used Phil's tactics of we're first time buyers, this is our budget, stuck to my guns, um, you know, there's no chain, we want a quick sell. Then it works a so, treat. Thanks, so. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. And although their initial search had called for a property with studio space for Simon's photography business, ultimately they realised it made more sense to keep home and business apart. Well, almost. Wendy joined the company and they secured a good rental deal on a warehouse just a short walk from the house. We're in a better position. Uh, our photography's really taken off. <laughs> it's been, been great. The studio was but an empty shell. However, some hard graft from this creative couple and a little help from their friends has turned it into a stunning and versatile workspace. I think it's really amazing to come home, get the fire on and, mm. and relax and it's only five minutes walk away. Brilliant. Wendy and Simon plan to spend the next few years growing their business and making their house a home. Another three and a half years on, they're still in their cute cottage in delightful Darley Abbey. But there have been some big changes for the couple. Now married, they have a dog called Trigger and an extra special edition. Got Matilda, a little baby girl. Well, she's not baby. She's come up to one now. So. Yeah, yeah. Time flies. So. So that's been that's been a bit of a whirlwind. 
When they found out Wendy was pregnant, it was the prospect of having a baby that spurred them on to make their house a safe and cosy family home. It needed quite a bit of work doing to the yeah. units. You was nesting, weren't you? So <laughs> you wanted to sort of get, get everything perfect, and it worked out really well. Re rewiring needed doing, didn't it? Yeah. But we put it off for years and years and years. I don't think I could take it anymore. By the time you flip the switch, <laughs> yeah. turn the oven on, it couldn't turn the washing machine on. You couldn't turn the washing machine because it flipped all the switches out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Then you couldn't turn the TV on because it flipped the oven out. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was my cooking that you didn't like. The whole house needed doing, really, like decoration wise. After rewiring, the whole house has like, funny patterns on the wall, like air, air tech. Is mm. it? Uh... Oh, text, is it? Yeah. Yes, I can barely bring myself to say that word either. But with the Artex gone, they've insulated, replastered and redecorated every room, making the cottage look really fresh, modern and much more sophisticated. And it's clear that there's a photographer in the house. So uh, having all the lighting and stuff was really important to us. We had all new light fixtures put in. Having spent around £24,000 to make every single room in the house look picture perfect, it wasn't a cheap or a quick fix. It's been a big job, really. The builder said, yeah, you'll be out for a month, and I think five, four and a half months later, yeah. we were still living at my mum and dad's house while the work gets done. Uh, so it took a while to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, been, real, it's been a lot of hard work, but it's, it's been worth it now. It's tough, tough living with the in-laws, but... <laughs> yeah. they, they did well, didn't they? Yeah. they? They put up with us. Nice save, Simon. Best keep them on side should you need babysitters, and I'm sure they'd be glad to visit. Good results. We're, we're happy with it, aren't we? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. The biggest change is the bathroom, which is amazing. I love a good bath. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Living the dream, really, like it well in our little world, anyway. <laughs> and what a lovely little world they've created. The loft's now a dreamy nursery for Matilda. But it's not just the cottage that's a success. Their flash photography studio has developed from two to 15 members of staff. Can you see where the chicken's face is? Yeah! Woo! And being within shooting distance of their home is ideal. We have a quite a good work and home balance, basically, so we keep work at work and keep the house to the house as well. Trigger, we try and bring them down as much as possible. The, the customers, they really love it. Trigger's a bit of a star in the Indali Abbey. <laughs> it's a bit of a character. But their expanding family means they're starting to run out of room in their home. We need a big house. We're, fall yeah. we're falling over on top of each and Matilda's starting to, to crawl um, at the moment, so we've been frantically sort of saving. We're hopefully going to try and start looking next year. We'd love to stay in the Dali Abbey area, but properties haven't come up mm. that we like with the same character of this house. I don't mm. really want to sell it because I love this house. Give Phil a call. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> give Phil a call. <laughs> Why not? And given the cottage is now worth 55 grand more than they paid for it, after their 24 grand work costs, that's a £31,000 profit. So they've set themselves up really well for any future move. And I can only hope that four years on, Nadine and Toby are also living the dream in London. I'm back, finding out where some of our house hunters are now. With Wendy and Simon living the dream in Derby, I want to see if Nadine and Toby stayed put in South East London. Just over four years ago, I showed designers Nadine and Toby a dilapidated former Masonic lodge. They bought it. And in three years, they renovated every inch of it themselves. Gone is the 1970s shop door. There are new windows railings. And thanks to a lick of paint, the entrance is no longer shabby. It's chic. I'm beyond excited to see what's going on in here. But it's not just the property that's changed. The Dean and Toby are now married and have a one-year-old daughter called Wren. Hello. Oh, 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 look at you. Oh, <gasps> look at you. Did you. Did the baby come with the house? Of yeah. course she come with the house for us, didn't she? Oh, look at this. Yeah, it's quite, quite a difference. A difference. It really is a difference. The shop, come Masonic Lodge, 
is now a glorious four-bed family house. And by removing and repositioning walls with their own bare hands, Nadine and Toby have brought the staircase back to life. Did you tell Custard you, re you retrained? Yeah, well, yeah, I retrained. What did you do? Well, as a plasterer. It was either, like, you know, 18,000 on plastering or 500, and he was a he's now a qualified plasterer renderer. That <laughs> is so useful. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. What a smooth move. As was putting in this full-length window so light can flood in, throughout the 1,500 square feet property, the hands-on pair have also replaced the roof, fitted new doors and re-leveled the floors. It's been an incredible effort and it shows in their sitting room, transformed from cold and clinical to wonderfully warm and welcoming. Look at this! Oh, my word! I think it's the light that strikes you straight away. We could barely see when we yeah, were last. Yeah, of course. Yes. The there was a massive grates over the windows. That is beautiful, those shutters. Even those were made by this pair, and during the epic three years it took to complete this transformation, Nadine and Toby lived here through hell and high water. We, we took, took the roof took off, the and it was off. that year where it just rained and rained and rained and rained, and we would get these like floods like coming from the top of the house. So we had a tarpaulin just over and lifted the tarpaulin for how long? Yeah, it was about seven months. That was a moment when I was just like head in hands. We didn't have a bathroom, so we just went to the gym a lot to the shower. <laughs> That's the only reason we joined the gym, actually. <laughs> In over 20 years of house hunting, I've met very few couples quite as brave and determined as these two. It's changed our lives doing this house. Yeah, it kind of makes you appreciate it that much more, doesn't it, as well, when you're doing a lot of the work yourself. It's tough, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's great. Toby made the renovations his full-time job and totally reconfigured the first floor, which now has a stunning master bedroom. And what was a tiny loo and small kitchen has now become a heavenly family bathroom. On the top floor, they've created another three spacious sleek bedrooms, plus a second bathroom. This was just a room, it was one room, wasn't it? And now it's light and beautiful and big. And guess what? Toby fitted new double glazed windows himself. You've learned so many skills. I mean, it's extraordinary. So many people just don't learn anything when they're having a house done by someone else. No. It doesn't feel like a renovated house. It's a restored definitely, house. Definitely, I think definitely part restoration. We've saved anything that was original and we've tried to put back as much as we can without it becoming sort of a bit faux. I don't get to see enough spaces like this. But the biggest change is in the basement. Once an uninhabitable, damp disaster zone, Nadine and Toby have skillfully created a cool and stylish kitchen, which looks out to a lovely courtyard. Oh, my kitty aunt, look at that. Oh, love the floor. The floors are a striking polished concrete, as are the kitchen surfaces, all done by Toby. He even made the lights for around 12 quid each. Utterly inspirational. This is an incredibly expensive look. If you don't do it yourself and you want this kind of kitchen, you pay through the nose. Because it's hugely labour intensive, that's yep. the thing. We've been able to save so much money because myself, Deanie and my dad have done all the work. And we've also tried to be a bit creative about using cheaper materials. All this worked off cost about 170 quid. I see that you and Nadine have worked incredibly hard. We made a good team in that sense, but we were working, you know, some days when we were doing rendering, we were doing 17 hours straight. Using the skills they had and their insatiable enthusiasm to learn new ones, this pair should be pleased as punch with this place. Absolutely no regrets. No regrets so. And I think I, we probably would do it and live in it again. The aesthetic is very strong and it's beautiful. That attention to detail that you've made, design decisions in every single part of the house. Were there any disagreements? There were plenty of disagreements. I mean, oh, I was going to say the opposite. No, but we're just, we're <laughs> we do tussle a little bit, but that's part of us coming up with an, an idea, I guess. And I think also because I come from more of a practical level, I think I, I'm more constrained in the sense of how far I'm prepared to push something. All the best pairings tussle. Having paid 346 grand for the property, 
the couple made massive sacrifices to be able to afford the 100 grand to renovate it. Whatever salary came yeah, it was in, ridiculous. we ate baked beans on toast and the rest went to the house. You so know? you spent probably 450,000 on it, you know, buying it, doing all the work. But the extraordinary thing is that if you wanted tomorrow to go out and buy a four bed house in this part of London, it would cost you in excess of a million pounds. Yeah. yeah. And that is an extraordinary thought. That is extraordinary. Yeah. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a very different situation to, the, to where we thought we'd ever be. I mean, we thought yeah. maximum it would be worth, you know, 650, 700,000. Yeah, that finished. was like beyond our wildest dreams. So it's great. It's, it's been, yeah, quite yeah. a rounding experience, steep learning curves. I want to have a little badge and it will have your faces on it and it will say, Nadine and Toby did it, you can too. <laughs> I take my hat off to Nadine and Toby. Their guts and gusto and sheer hard work has enabled them to set themselves up for life. And Simon and Wendy have had patience and perseverance and they finally got the work-life balance they were looking for. It's a proper happy ending.